is John chapter 20. Now, um, uh, because of time, for sake of time, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give you a preface, which you all should already know this story. The Lord has been crucified. He's been buried. <clears throat> he has already risen. They've come looking for him. Uh, uh, they don't find him. They run to the disciples. And some of them come over running, uh, uh, looking to see what happened. And while Mary Magdalene, how many of you know who Mary Magdalene was? She, she had very close encounters with the Lord. Amen? Very close encounters with the Lord. If anybody had ever presenced the Lord, it was Mary Magdalene. Amen? So saying that, let's, let's read uh, verse 13. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. And we, when she had done, said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. Listen to this. And knew not. Wow. That it was Jesus. She saw him there standing and she knew not. This is the, the woman that had just washed his feet. With tears and an expensive alabaster. Amen. What? It hadn't been 10 days. Let's say it hadn't been a month. Let's give her a little bit of time. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener. Wow. Said unto him, Sir, if thou, if thou have borne him, hence tell me where thou hast laid him. And I will take him away. Dear Heavenly Father, give me English grace. Give me preaching grace. Just for the next 15 minutes, Lord, let me be a blessing to your church and an encouragement. In your name I pray. Amen. I want to preach this morning on where have we laid him? Where have we laid him? It is a given that when you are saved, you're called a Christian because you carry him in your life every day. You behave accordingly. You act appropriately. You dress accordingly. You look accordingly. The Lord has forgiven you. There's a glow in your countenance, or there should be. Amen? Amen? But let's be honest as time goes by. Amen. Let's be honest as time goes by. Life hits you brother. With different things. And it's not always sin preacher. It's just the things of this world. And let me say something. There's nothing wrong with many of the things of this world. I, Amen. I, I I love hunting. Uh, even though I haven't had the chance to go hunting in a long time, I, I love to take my son fishing. I like to take my kids to ball games. I, I love life. There's nothing wrong with it. But sometimes we put so many things in our hands that somewhere we laid down the Lord. And forgot about them. We come to church. We dress for church. But somewhere we've laid down the Lord. And forgot about them. The Lord have mercy on us if we ever forget. Where we lay him. Oh let me tell you. I've heard people say, preacher, the Lord left 
me alone. The Lord is no longer with me. No, the Lord won't leave you alone if you're his child. We lay him down somewhere and forget where we laid him. Because when you're his child, he'll be right there if you need him, if you want him. I have five kids. I, I, I would sleep in my bed with all five kids if they wanted to. <laughs> but there comes a little time when they say, Dad, I'm too old for this now. I saw a preacher holding his grandfather. I tell you what, when they're little, oh, man, they're all love, all hugs, all kisses. But then they start getting into their life. And that happens to us many times with God. Let's go back to Mary Magdalene. Here's a woman that had demons cast out of her, that had sins forgiven, that the Lord had been merciful to her. God's love was shown to her in a mighty way. He had embraced her, healed her, made her an honest woman, a clean woman. But it wasn't long before she forgot where they laid him. Now, I know, don't, don't say I'm, don't, please don't badger me. I know the context. I know they knew where the Lord was laid. That's why they went looking for him. That's how they found out he wasn't there. But in spiritual perspective, we can see that she forgot where they laid him. All the Lord did through his ministry, time and time again, he reminded them of his purpose of coming to this earth, and that was to be crucified and shed his blood and die for you and and then be buried but he would not stay there they should know the story Jordan they should have been running the aisles praising the Lord saying he came through with what he said but instead they were hiding in the upper room the doors were closed the windows were sealed. They were afraid of the Jews, the Bible says. They forgot who the Lord was. How to know that you forgot where you laid him? First of all, you will lose the joy of the Lord. When you see a Christian that can just not enjoy Christianity, just doesn't enjoy church, just doesn't enjoy the Lord in his personal life, he has already laid him somewhere and forgotten about him. Jesus had to ask Mary, hey, why weepest thou? See, weeping is, is sometimes you cry of joy. God will do something for you. And, and, and you cry of gratefulness and joy. But she was weeping. When you weep, that's different. That's a cry of sorrow. That, that's a cry of despair. She was weeping. She lost her joy. If you ever feel like you're losing your joy, you better stop at this place and pick the Lord up again. You better drop what you're doing and pick the Lord up again. Everything you've picked up, everything you've carried around, you need to drop it. The worst thing for a saved soul is to lose the joy of his salvation. Oh, David, David, his cry, his cry to God was not even at the end. He was not even asking for forgiveness. He's like, Lord, please give me back my joy. I, uh, send me to the cave, send me to the wilderness, but give me back 
my joy. No joy turns you dry. No joy turns you dry. And a dry person hurts everyone around him. Amen? A dry person hurts everyone around him. When I went through our situation, the church didn't want me to resign. I said, look, look, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I'm, I'm upset. I'm sick. If I get up here and preach like that, that's all you're going to hear from me. Amen? You, you can come to church and pretend you got a smile in your face and pretend everything's okay, but if the joy of the Lord has left you, my friend, you forgot where you laid him. You need to pick him up again. You need to carry him. She said, tell me where you laid him. I will take him away. You need to pick up the Lord, take him with you. You need to make sure he's with you everywhere you go. You need to make sure you have him in your life everywhere you go. Not only do you lose the joy of the Lord when you forget where you left him, but you lose knowledge of the Lord. You, know, you lose, let me put it this way. I haven't been here three years. I have to sit there and reminisce on some of your faces. It's the truth. Amen? I have, what, a hundred of you to remember. <laughs> So I have to sit here a lot of times and, and, and try to remember your face. See, that's what happens when you lay the Lord down somewhere and not pick him up. You will forget him. You, hey, let me say that again. You will forget him. Whom seekest thou? Here's the Lord talking to you. That's his voice. That's his voice. What she heard, tell the disciples, hey, let her be. She's doing this for my burial. Let her be. It hadn't been long before she had heard his voice, and now she couldn't recognize him. See, when you lay the Lord down away from your life, You'll lose knowledge of the Lord. You'll have somebody come up to you and ask you a question and you won't know how to answer. Time's flying by. It, it's sad. You know what you know what she said? The Bible says the Bible says she thought it was a gardener. Wow. She thought he was a gardener. How can you go from a few days before hearing the voice of the Lord and knowing it was him and all of a sudden, a week or two later, you can't recognize his voice? Be careful. Drop what you got in your hands. Pick him up. We need to pick him up. Hey, I'll say it again. Let's drop what we have in our hands. We need to pick him up. I'm going to finish with this. And this is one of the most important things. Everything's important. But you know that you've laid the Lord down and forgotten about him because his presence leaves you. I, I, I like to 
You know one of the feelings I love? When I'm just going about my day working or doing whatever I'm going to do, and I can feel his presence. <laughs> I'll be taking off an alternator of a vehicle and I'll smash my hand and and even then I feel his presence. See, because when the Lord is with you, even in the worst times, you can feel his presence. As a matter of fact, the only thing that can keep you going through the hard times is his presence. Many people are not in church, not because they were mad at you or at somebody else in the church. They're not in church because they lost his presence and they can no longer feel it. And it ain't the church. They laid God somewhere and forgot him. She couldn't feel his presence. There was two men walking on the, do the road and the Lord appeared unto them. And they said to themselves, why not a heart burning? His presence was there. Hey, hey, his presence was there. When his presence is in your life, you can feel it. It'll make you cry of gratitude, of joy. It'll make you praise him. I know some of you don't like to scream and shout like some of us, but you will every now and then raise your hand and shed a tear and feel them in your heart. People come into church and leave like nothing ever happened. A preacher will be up here. He has studied for nights. He's preparing a message that God has given him. He's trying to be a blessing to you. He's trying to be a help to you. And you just come in and leave. You know what that is? You've lost the presence of the Lord. Because when the presence of God is in you, for God so loved the world, runs chills down your back. When you, when you have the presence of God, Jesus wept makes you cry to know that you have a savior that has a heart for you that has a heart for his people but we've laid him down somewhere and we can't even remember where it is a sad thing it is a sad day the day that happens to us. Because he had to really talk to her. You see, I don't know if you see this. It's the same thing in Christianity. It's not until the Lord really talks to you. Once you've been backslid. Once you've lost the joy. Once you've lost his knowledge once you've lost his presence the Lord really has to talk to you I tell you something sometimes he speaks hard he will speak hard he had to he had to say unto her in verse 16 he said Mary Don't wait. Don't wait till God has to scream at you your name. See, my kids, I don't use their names. There's too much love there. They're not just an identification. They're not just a, 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 a body. They're my kids. Hey, son. Hey, baby. Hey, princess. Hey, my queen. Hey, my joy. But when they make you mad, when they mess up, Jordan! 
As a matter of fact, you don't, you not only call him, you call all his siblings before you call his name. <laughs> He's made you so mad. I've had my daughter say that I'm not Umberto. Don't wait. Don't wait till the Lord has to scream your name out. Come pick him up. She said, if thou, if thou born him hence. You know what's the sad thing? To know and believe that other people have him and you don't. Man, I sure love how that sister, man, she's so joyful in church. What's wrong with you? You can have the same joy. You can have the same excitement. You can have the same desire to know more about him. I said, notice what I said, know more. The Bible says we are to know more. We need to know him. Where have we laid him? If you don't remember where you laid him, that's the place where you can pick him up again. Put down your things and come pick him up. Carry him with you, preacher. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.